Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I just wanted to make a quick video today about what to do when you receive a corporate action for a tender offer. Now this has been in the news a lot lately, especially with the Divin community on X and on Facebook. Uh, BlackRock has announced that there's some corporate actions that are coming up for some of their close end funds. So I wanted to spend a few minutes to talk about what they are, why are you receiving them, and what are your choices on what to do with them? So let's get started. So as you see here, I'm inside my Fidelity account and I have a couple corporate actions. Um, the three that I wanna talk about today is BlackRock Health, B-M-E-Z, BlackRock Health 1, B-M-E, and BlackRock Science and Technology Trust 2, which is B-S-T-Z. So as you see, I have upcoming tender offers open for participation and I have a couple of weeks to make a decision. So you might be wondering why we got these. So if you go into each one of them, it tells you what the details are. So it basically says that BlackRock is offering to buy back a certain percentage of the shares at a certain price by the cutoff date, which in this case for BMEZ is on August 16th. So let's look at the offer terms. It says they have announced an offer to purchase up to two and a half percent of the outstanding shares of the common stock. The buyout will be at a purchase price of equal to 98% of the trust net asset value per share on the next day that the NAV or the net asset value is calculated. So you're probably wondering, okay, what does all that mean and why would they do that? Well, let's hop into it. Before I do that, look at some other ones I received. So this is the BME one and BSTZ. So going over to BlackRock's website, they announced a couple of weeks back on May 3rd that they're going to adopt a discount management program. So what this is going to do is on certain of their closed-in funds, which we'll review here, if there's an opportunity for them to buy back the shares, they will if certain conditions are met. As you see, some of the funds here is BCAT, ECAT, BIGZ, BMEZ, BSTZ, BGY, uh, a big one in the dividend community is BDJ, BST is very popular, BME, and so on. So if you own any of these closed-in funds from BlackRock, there'll be opportunities during the cycle that they might be offering to buy back the shares. So it says, if a fund's common shares trade an average daily discount to net asset value of more than 7.5% during a three-month measurement period, the fund intends to purchase 2.5% of the outstanding common shares at a price equal to 98% of the fund's NAV. Now, in order to understand why you would want to get something at less than 100% of the value, you have to understand how closed-in funds operate. So with that, I'm going to hop over to one of BlackRock's other sites that talks about um, what the difference is between uh, premiums and discounts. So looking at a closed-in fund, it's a investment vehicle that collects investor funds at the beginning. They don't accept any new cash. That's why they're called a closed-in fund. And what they'll do is they will go out and invest in other assets or other securities. So for instance, BME invests in healthcare related stuff. BST invests in health, uh, sorry, scientific technology. A BDJ invests in dividend stocks. So what they do is they hold all these assets within the fund and those, the prices or the valuations of those individual holdings might go up and down. But that is separate from what the close in funds net asset value compared to the stock price is. So there could be an instance where the net asset value, meaning the value of all the underlying uh, securities that the closing fund has are higher or lower than the sales price of the actual closing fund itself. So uh, this is basically talking about the, the market. If the market price of a closing fund is above its net asset value, the fund is said to be trading at a premium. Conversely, when a fund's market price is below NAV, the CEF is trading at a discount. So there'll be opportunities in the market for the closing fund to be worth more than the underlying assets, or it could be valued at less than the underlying assets. So in this particular instance, going back to BlackRock, they are saying that if at any point during the three month review period, it goes under or more than 707.50% of the net asset value, then it triggers the opportunity for them to do a share buyback. That's ultimately what they're doing. So looking at uh, the most recent uh, announcement ending June 30th, these are the average daily discounts to net asset value that these particular closing funds were trading at. Is it 8.81%, 15%, 12.5%, and so on and so on. So that's why you got the notification if you own any of these tickers 
that have an average daily of negative 7.50 or more. What BlackRock is trying to do is buy back those shares to provide value to um, their shareholders or their unit holders at a price that's higher than the market is currently offering. So they're saying that the value of the underlying, of the um, closing fund is higher than what the market is um, trading at. So they want to buy it back from you at a discount. Now the discount will be higher than what the current uh, market price is today, but it's still less than what the net asset value is. So it's a benefit to the shareholders. It's also a benefit to BlackRock because they are buying back their shares at a discount. So now that we know why they're doing it and what the qualifications are, let's take a look at some of the discounts that these particular funds are going at right now. So I pulled up BSTZ from the BlackRock's website, and as you see, the net asset value is $22.26, but the market price is only $19.07. So it's actually trading at a discount of negative 12.17%. So if this was to be at the expiration date of the tender offer, and it was still trading at this price compared to net asset value, instead of the value being 1907, BlackRock is saying that they'll give you 98% of the net asset value of the term. So in this particular instance, it's uh, $22.26 as a net asset value. So they would offer you 2% lower than that to buy your shares back from you. So compared to the current market price, that's a good deal for you as an investor, as long as your cost basis is under what the, um, the offer is. So let's look at another, another one. This is a BMEZ. The market price is $15.64, but the net asset value, meaning the value of all the um, investments that the fund holds, is actually 18.02. So it's at a 12.60% discount. So again, if this was the closing date of the offer and the net asset value was the same price, they're going to offer you 2% less than 1802 to buy your shares back from you. Again, it's higher than the current market price. So you're getting a benefit and the company is able to buy back the shares um, at a discount to their uh, net asset value. So again, if your purchase price was under the net asset, uh, net asset value, um, <clears throat> decision or the offer that they're going to make you, then it might be a benefit to you to sell. Now, as long-term dinner investors, we're not looking to sell all shares, but having an opportunity to gain um, some capital appreciation for holding on to your shares is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, if you look at um, BMEZ, if the value is 18.02 and they're offering you 98%, that means they would offer you about $17.66 for your shares Going back, again, the market price today is only $15.64. So you're making a little bit more than $2 over the current market price um, for participating in this share buyback. Now you don't have to do anything. If you go back to your uh, broker, it says that you, you can do things if you want to, but you don't have to. If you choose not to participate in the buyback, then you would just maintain what you currently have. You don't have to make any kind of response and uh, you go on with your investing life. But if you do want to take them up on their offer, you would have to reach out to your broker. In my case, Fidelity, I would have to call them up and say, I want to participate in the BME um, tender offer. And they would say, okay, how many shares are you willing to sell at that 98% of net asset value? And then you would go ahead and um, offer that up. And then as of the, expert, the cutoff date and the exercise date, then your shares will be sold at 98% of the net asset value that BlackRock determines, and you would get the cash in your account. So hopefully that helps to explain what a corporate action is when they're offering a tender offer to buy back your closing funds. As you saw in our presentation today, BlackRock is offering on the vast majority of their closing funds. So if you do hold any of those shares, it's something to consider. Again, you do only have until about August 16th to make a decision. So take a look and make sure it makes sense for you if you want to participate. If not, that's perfectly fine as well. You can keep your shares and you don't have to do any kind of action. So thank you for joining today. Hopefully you enjoyed this different take on, uh, on the channel. Uh, normally we do uh, more formal videos, but I wanted to hop on here and um, present this to you. Let me know if you like this style and you like this approach. Uh, I can always do more videos like this. Um, and also let me know if you prefer the other style of videos. Again, I appreciate you joining. Please make sure you like and subscribe. Check out the next video on the screen. And in the meanwhile, keep that dividend stockpile growing. Thanks all.